consider yourself a vet now, or just how did it feel uh, after year two? Or what things are you taking from the Yeah, they they tell me I got to play three games before I'm considered a vet. They sound Buck, uh, Pitt, Z. They still tell me I'm a rookie. So I got three more games before that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I know what training camp's about. I'm excited for the preseason, the first game. So I feel like I've settled in a little bit there. But in order to be a vet on the team, I got three games first. So how, how they calculate three games? Where the three games come from? I don't know. That's I guess that's their rule. But they they <laughs> they make sure I know that I'm still a rookie. What what feels different this time of year? Like just knowing where mm-hmm. to go in camp. What to do? Like, what feels different for you now? Uh, just being more comfortable on the field, um, even off the field. I just know how to take care of my body better. I have a, a better routine of how to take care of my legs, take care of my mental. Um, and then on the field, I know the offense. I'm not I'm not thinking about the route as I'm running to line up. I'm, I'm hearing the play, and now I'm looking at who's in front of me, like, okay, what defense are they in? So I feel like for me, that's the biggest thing. And then um, helping guys like AD. Like AD's outside of me. He's young, so I'm trying to help him as much as possible. And then just being like – on like same same mental as Pitt because Pitt knows a lot, AP knows a lot, and now when I'm on the field with them, it's more so just clicking. What kind of advice do you give AD about how to handle first training camp, rookie year, and all that? Yeah, I mean, I just tell him like, he, I mean, of course, take care of your body. That's the biggest thing. Um, and then with the coaches, you know, I'm like, just say yes sir, no sir, do whatever they gotta say because they know best. And then um, on the field, I'm like, be you. Just he got that swagger, he got that confidence. I'm like, just go out there and make plays. Both Chris Ballard and Jim Bob said they're really excited for the jump that you're going to make. What, what are your expectations for yourself and a, and a talented wide receiver? Really? Yeah, I mean, we got a great receiver core, but I feel like you got to have that. Um, AD, AP, Pitt, um, Anthony Gould, DJ Montgomery, a lot of guys like that. Doolin is back. Um, but, yeah, year one to year two, it's always been a big jump for me. High school, college, it was both the same. So uh, for this year, whenever my number's called, I know I just got to make that play. I know. Anthony trusts me. I trust him. So um, we clicking before practice, after practice, even off the field. That's my dog. So um, I know that he does trust me. He'll throw me the ball. And I just got to keep earning his trust when he throws it to me. I'm going to catch it. Yeah, I mean, just like any relationship, you spend more time with a person. You really uh, feel out who they are and stuff like that. So um, AR is a quiet dude. He's, he's, he's not, I would say he's shy, but like he's not just going to talk to everybody unless you really get to know him. So. Um, yeah, just just being this year with him. Um, should we walk into the facility together sometimes, talking to him whenever, joking with him? Um, and then now it's just we seeing different plays that it, it might not be in the playbook, but he like, hey, JD, if you see this, do that. And I'm like, I was thinking the same thing. So just stuff like that. How important is that with the option routes and being on the same page? On the field? Oh, 100 percent is very important because you know option routes may get muddy sometimes. Every route may get muddy, muddy especially over the middle because you don't want to just fly across the middle sometimes, you might run into Z and just get smacked. So sometimes you got to sit in a hole, and it, and it might not be on the playbook to sit there, but you might need to sit right there so you don't get killed, and that's the only hole that's open. So um, things like that. Uh, you say you're not a rookie, but or you say you are a rookie, but, mm-hmm. I mean, you're going from last year to this year. What is one thing that you feel that you did really good and one thing that you know that you still need to improve on? Yeah, I mean, I felt like uh, last year um, when my number was called, I did – I did pretty well there. I could do better, of course. Um, but this year, yeah, I mean, I was I was a little hurt last year, a little banged up. I wasn't as fast. I wasn't as explosive as I usually am. I feel like this year I got more of that in me. So um, more big, more explosive plays really um, than anything. That's that's the big thing I'm focused on. Given how close you are with Anthony and you were, you know, remembered his some of the moments when he got hurt. I mean, just what was it like to see him get through the rehab and be back out here to see him? Like, what's it like just as a friend to see him get yeah. through that? I, I know how it is being injured. Um, you f- you're on the team, but it's also like you're not play- you're not out there doing the sports you love. So um, I know it was tough for him um, having to watch us and uh, not be out there. So now I know he's real motivated, um, and more than anything, just just excited to be on the field because um, you really take it for granted every day. You go out there, you're like, "Dang, I'm tired." Like camp's long, but as soon as you can't go out there and step on the field, you really feel it. Uh, you feel it mi- mentally mostly because you're like. I'm all, I ain't out there playing the game I love. So more than anything, I know he's just excited to be out there and play. You get all these, you get all these reps against Kenny out here in practice. What do you think sets him apart from other like, guys who play inside? Yeah, Kenny real smart. He tries to mix it up on me a little bit, uh, switch it up, his his look. So he'll try to disguise me when it's zone and disguise me when it's man. But I'm starting to really more so catch on to it. But, uh, yeah, Kenny, he's, he's so smart. He's very quick, and he's uh, he's real strong for his size. So um, just being like that, he, he can – he can get physical too, so going against him every day really helps me because I mean he's top two, really not two, top one in the league. So 
I feel like I got I got the best slot receiver job in the league because I'm going against the best every single day. Do you feel like other guys like in the season do the same kind of? Trying to disguise stuff, or is that kind of a Kenny special himself? That's a Kenny special. Last year, I, I I could tell when dudes was playing me, man. I mean, they they would just straight up line up against me, but Kenny will walk around. He'll he'll pretend, and, and me and Ar looking at each other like, because it, it's like we like, is it man or is it zone? Like we like, uh, but we we caught on a few times today, so uh, we definitely clicking more there. Um, but yeah, Kenny Kenny got a little swagger about himself. He's out there. He's out there hooping always, so I, I love it. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not really worried about the off season per se. Uh, I put in the work. I know what I did um, behind closed doors and even some videos that um, people seen. But I know that the work's been done. So whatever comes to fruition is whatever comes to fruition. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate For sure. Thank you. I mean, for me, it's really just a blessing. I mean, I remember last year, like around this time, like just being a football guy, so like I was like just itching to be out here with the guys, um, try not to put pressure on myself and all that. But uh, like right now, like it's just it's just a blessing to be out here first and foremost. Uh, so now, just taking advantage of all these reps. What ankle did you have? Uh, Chris Dollar said you had an ankle cleanup. I guess what ankle was it? And what went into the decision? Uh, yeah, I had a little little anger decision like Ballard talked about. Uh, it was something I was kind of dealing with OTAs, but nothing major, so it's all good now. Though. Our, Ballard said that, that there was maybe some question about how much you'd be able to do. How, how good is it that you're pretty much doing everything in this first couple practice? I'm about to say, shit, I see I'm out here, so I feel great. Mm -hmm. I feel great. Uh, just been busting my ass to be out here. So uh, just knowing, like, last year, like I said, I wasn't able to. So, like, during that period when I had the little procedure, just doing everything I could to make sure once we get out here, I hit the ground rolling. So it's been great just to be out here. When you had the procedure, did they tell you, what, what did the doctors tell you? Did they tell you it might linger in the training camp or, did you, or were you ahead of schedule? Or? Pretty much told it would be up to me. Um, kind of gave me a timetable, but just depending on around where we at around this time at camp, so that I may not or may. So we out here now, so it's all good. What are your expectations for this defensive backfield this year? What are your goals, I guess, for this group? First for us, just to come out here and have the mentality to be the best, uh, just compete. Every single day, you know, going against guys like Pitt, uh, AD, you know, Alec, even Josh Downs, all the guys. So just having them iron sharp as iron is helping us just have that confidence. But uh, come out here compete and just be the best AFC South and then go to the playoffs. Uh, just being intentional, um, learning from the vets, just learning, like, what works for them, how I could apply it to myself. Um, I would say just... Even when I'm not like around the football environment, just having like that type of mentality. So every little thing, like watch what I'm eating, uh, no more eating out and all that. I can't have as much of mom's home cooked meals, even though she in the city. So just uh, making sure I'm watching all that and uh, just being intentional. Did you do anything different for? I mean, your first NFL offseason. Did you do anything like training wise off on your own? Um, I mean, I have like guys who I work with around like the country or whatnot, but. A lot of the stuff I did was here, like just in the city. Um, I just trust my team, the people around me, even like the people I work with, like around, um, like down in Florida and whatnot. Have like a good plan set for so um, all the little knickknack injuries and all that, just nipping in the bud and be out here to be good. I remember you talked to the end last year, like your focus the offseason was to get through that, to be able to like play full season. I mean, do you feel, you don't have to play out, but do you feel good about like the things you did this offseason and having a better chance to be on the field? I feel great. I definitely feel great. And I would say the main thing just like my mentality. I ain't got to come out here right now and thinking about doing this and that. Like now I can just allow my body to do it because I put that work in and all that's behind me. And now I can just go out there and let the field be the field. What's your biggest personal goal when you're a training camp as opposed to your personal goal that you have for yourself for the regular season? Uh, for me, for the training camp, is just come out here and have no mental errors. Uh, being a good young guy last year, not having that being an excuse this year, um, just treat myself like a, like a young vet. Uh, so no mental errors. Just come out here and compete every single day. Like I don't care who, like who it is in front of me. Like Pitt, like Pitt got to get it. Like I love Pitt, but Pitt got to get it. AD, all the guys. Uh, and just show myself that love. Prove to myself like I'm the best. Like I said, I am. So I just said that mentality every single day. You got you come up with different body types and wide receiver between Pitt, AD, you know Alec, different skill sets. How do facing those different guys help you kind of hone your craft? Oh, uh, it's great. I would say. Um, like being a defensive back is like a it's like a mental warfare. You got to know like when to use this technique, when to get in your bag and switch it up. So I, 
going against Pitt, I may be a little bit more heavy against JD. I may use my feet a little bit more. Um, just knowing like down the distance as well can let me know when to be more aggressive. I'm a longer guy, so guys automatically like expect me to be like real physical at the line. But just being able to get in my bag, use my different tangibles, switch it up is big. So I would just say like the versatility we have on the offensive side, it does help me a lot. So, uh, you know, kudos to all them. But, yeah, they go get it, though. What was it that you were thinking to have the day that you had, as many days you had? What was that yeah. decision and I guess how gratifying was it for you? Uh, bro, that's like, that just gave me like ultimate joy. Cause like, I just remember like being a kid and just want to see like guys are like on this level and just be around them. So like, I knew like once I get in that position, I'm going to be able to get back to my community. So, you know, this past last weekend, that was our <clears throat> year two. Last year was a little bit, a little bit rough, kind of weaving through everything, figuring it all out with the backpacks and whatnot. But yeah, we passed out over a thousand backpacks, had vendors, um, free physical for the kids, haircut, bounce houses. You know, just a whole nine. You know, just to see, like, kids just come up to me, like, you're my hero, and all that, just putting a smile on their face before they go out to school, man. It's, uh, it's definitely a blessing. Um, just thank God for just giving me that opportunity, man. You know, we go keep it rolling for the, for the years to come. What's your personal Last goals one. for this season? Personal goals for this year? Um, for me is, like I said, mental errors limit that. Um, Continue to stay healthy. That's a big thing for me. And uh, just continue to step myself as the best. Simple as that. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. How we doing, guys? You had 13 or 14 guys kind of taking tickets on the first day. Is it just with, with not knowing, with these guys not having necessarily done this before, is it just get as many guys out there as possible and see how they kind of react to the new yeah, as many guys that are ball handlers that we can get experience uh, being a returner, both punt returner and kickoff returner, you know, we want to work them as much as possible. So there's some guys that will work as returners, and then one day they'll go and be on the front line of kickoff return. They can kind of do multiple different roles. Uh, but we're just trying to get as many guys back there to see who can handle some of these different situations because it's still very speculative exactly how this is going to play out. There's certainly a chance or an incentive that there's going to be trick kicks. Uh, the ball could be rolling around on the ground. You're not necessarily looking for a traditional kickoff return that can catch an easy you know, ball with an over four-second hang time. So who are some of those guys that are really trustworthy ball handlers um, that can field ground balls and get the ball vertical and make somebody miss? And that's not something maybe we've evaluated in the past, so we are kind of got a bigger pool of guys that we're trying to work through to get experience with that. The guy who, who doesn't get the ball, you have two returners back there, and the guy who doesn't get the ball, it's kind of a weird like blocking technique because you run so much before you get to it, right? Like that's going to be a different kind of thing to leave the guy up there and you're running 15 yards before you get to that. Get to it, right? Yeah, um, the timing and spacing on everything is definitely different. And it's definitely going to be different for that off returner. He's still going to go and, and try to block or kick somebody out probably similar to what he used to. Just the timing of all that is going to be very different, especially because he's the only other guy that's back there where you used to have three guys back there. Um, but certainly the timing of all that is something we're still trying to figure out. And, you know, based on different kicks you might get, that timing could be different on a lot of different reps. So certainly it's something that we still need to get more experience with. So what was your, what was your, so what was your, your, uh, your reaction when you found out that the kickoff rules had been changed <clears throat> We were kind of eased into it. We started having um, Zoom meetings with all 32 uh, special teams coordinators in the NFL um, back in February. So well before it was kind of proposed or put on paper, um, they had kind of brought up, here's what we're looking to do. We had some meetings at the Combine about it to go through more details. So we started studying that you know, early in the offseason to kind of get a feel for how everything was going to work. The rule has been adjusted you know, um, pretty regularly, just about every month. Something's kind of tweaked here and there. So we're still working with some of those adjustments as we work through everything. But um, it wasn't like, you know, right after the owners' meetings that it was a big surprise. It was something that we'd kind of been working on. It's just going to be something that we have to constantly adapt and grow with as we get more experience to be able to do it once the pads get on. You know, we haven't really been able to do a live rep of it 11 on 11 because we haven't been able to put the pads on yet. How important would those preseason games be? So the preseason games, the kind of figuring out <clears throat> personnel, strategy. Yeah. I think joint practices are going to be probably the number one, probably best tool to see how everything goes. Um, preseason games are going to be great as well. Um, but once we can get through joint practices and preseason games, we'll have a much better feel for, um, at least to some degree, how things are going to play out. 
how did you how did you research how this was going to be? Did you reach out to people obviously who've done it before? Yeah, so we studied a lot about the XFL, watched all the XFL clips. The difference being, um, you know, we've obviously tweaked some things in the NFL than what the XFL does. So I think the timing and some of the spacing and things will be different than the XFL game, and it'll be different than the XFL game because our play can start when the ball hits the ground. So we might see a lot of different kicks with some of those things. We talked to Sam Schwartzstein, um, who actually was with the XFL and invented the play and kind of went through how they tested it and practiced it. Um, and we've talked with some XFL coaches um, both in person and over the phone to kind of get an idea of how they practiced it or how they coached it. I think there are some differences that we still need to figure out how to work with that, uh, but we've tried to use as many resources as we could find. From a defensive perspective, like, does it change or at least open the door for more like, archetypes to, like, I guess, defend kickoffs in today's rules? Yeah, so from a kickoff standpoint, there's going to be less running, um, and we know that there's probably going to be more returns in a shorter space. Um, so we're looking for guys that are really good defensive players for the most part that can tackle and can shed blocks quickly. So you're looking at, hey, maybe we can use some more starters on defense because there's not as much running. And we know, you know this is a really important play. We don't have levels to the coverage like we used to because guys aren't running down the field. Everybody's starting in a straight stationary line. So if the ball pops, that's you know obviously a concern. So we need as many guys that we can trust to get the ball down um, the first time as possible. A lot of fun kickoff questions. All right. Gus didn't go too long. <laughs> How are we doing, guys? What do, you, what do we got? Fire away. What's the biggest growth you've seen from Anthony from year one to year two? Yeah, year one to year two is a really fun time uh, for all young players, especially at the quarterback position. Um, he's had, you know, a year in the system, a year in the NFL. He's learned a lot. He's learning a lot. Um, you know, to have a, have a chance to get out there and show a little bit of that, and which will, which will come. We're going to keep practicing and keep playing these preseason games and joint practices and all that. I'm excited to sort of watch that watch that happen on the field. Um, you know, just 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 a great opportunity, sort of to spend some time learning and and then go execute and show everybody what you've learned. And he's he's right in the middle of that right now. We're right in the right in the thick of training camp. So looking forward to to watching that happen. DJ said on Thursday that he's so excited to watch this offense. He's not even going to sit down when you guys are on the field. Yeah, EJ always has some unique ideas for for things. Uh, he's got some he's got some offensive plays he wouldn't mind too. But I, I'm excited, man. It's an exciting group. Uh, when you look around and you know early in practice, all of our positions are going through position drills. And I'm, sometimes I kind of stand out in the middle and I'm able to see everybody. When you sort of look from one group to the other to the other. Gosh, there's different excitement for each group for different reasons. Um, you know, early in the year we're probably always excited, but uh, man, th you know, we're we're the 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 sun is bright out there. It's a beautiful day today, and gosh, our guys are running around, and uh, we get to we get to go have training camp practice every day or just about every day, and kind of see what we've got. You know, you think you know what you got. Um, yeah, but get ahead of this one because I always say it like ten times a year in training camp. Like we we'll put the pads on, you know. Get out there and try to run the ball a little bit and, and pass protect and all that fun stuff. We'll kind of really find out what we got. But uh, but no, it's it's really exciting. We're we're really excited about all the groups and all the guys and sort of how we mesh together and how the team comes together, especially offensively for me. Um, sort of seeing how that goes and and I don't know. I'm excited for it. So what are the what the competition looking like for the tight end room? Because we know it's cool, but what are you looking for most? Yeah, it's a, it's a great group. It's a really interesting group because different guys do different things really, really well. And, you know, you want to, when we get into the season, when we get into the mode of playing these other opponents, you want to let those guys do what they do really well uh, to help our team the most. But for us as coaches, it's important this time of year to let all the guys try all the different roles out, right? Gosh, maybe you catch the ball a little bit more last year for us. You caught the ball a little bit more for us in the offense. Well, this year, gosh, let's see how you're blocking, right? Let's try that out. Or you're doing certain types of blocks last year. Let's try some other stuff. So this is the time of year where everybody gets a chance to show what they've got. Um, you know, ultimately, it's a position with a, with a bunch of good players that can play good football. It's on us as coaches and sort of organizationally to find out how that meshes on a game day with, with how many guys we get to dress and, and sort of what that looks like. Uh, for us offensively. The, the story's not written yet. I know those guys are uh, ready to compete their tail off. And for a bunch of guys, you know, when you when you have a role and you do that thing really, really well, 
you know, you always want to show, show that you can do something else, right? That's exciting for them. So we're going to give them a shot to do that and, and find out what we got. One of those guys. With, with the, today, as a coach and a teacher, it looks like there's some rough moments on offense. Do you, does that give you a chance to correct things? Yeah, chat. We're going to have some corrections coming out of today. Uh, it's man, it's it's day two of training camp. You know, you're you're probably not. Uh, we're probably not pushing the guys hard enough with with some of the stuff we're teaching and installing and trying to do if we don't have a few mistakes. You know, as coaches, gosh, it sure is great to to go out there and have that really clean, perfect practice. But uh, then 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 the coaches wouldn't have that much value, right? And we don't like that, chat. We got to have some value, so we got to get out there and we got to correct these guys a little bit. Uh, we'll clean some stuff up. Um, we've had a nice off season. We've been working through some walkthrough related stuff, and sometimes you start going full speed, and we just got to clean up the timing of things. So there's there's work to be done. Uh, yeah, we we'll make a we'll make a nice little correction uh, afternoon for them. We'll work through everything and hopefully be cleaner next time around. One of those tight ends, Jelani Woods. You didn't get a lot of moments with last year. So yep. how much? Do you feel like you know about his skill set already and how much he's still kind of have to work through? Yeah, we, I mean, just in person, you know, we saw him a little bit last year. We didn't get to see a ton of, a ton of live reps, a ton of action. We've seen, obviously, the tape from the year before. You know, we're, we're really excited to get him out here and let him play and let him, like, like we were talking about with the tight end position, gosh, let him try to do everything. And we'll put the pads on and we're blocking, we're running routes, we're doing different things in protection. Um, you know, July's going to get a chance to do all that, um, you know, we're excited about watching him do that and sort of learning, learning a little bit more about him because we, you know, you learn a lot off tape, and that's a really important part of our business. But, you know, the, the value of training camp out here practicing live against, uh, you know, an opponent you know well, you know, when he's matching up versus one of our safeties, gosh, we got a good feel for how that guy plays and, and, and how he's going to defend him. And we'll see if Jelani can beat that guy on a pass route or maybe block a defensive end on a run play. Uh, it's, a, it's a good time of year. We're excited to watch Jelani. Last year, last year. You know, you, Shane, Reggie kind of talked about how Josh's football background gave him a good foundation as a rookie. Now that he's got that rookie foundation, where can he kind of grow his game in year two? Yeah, year one to year two. We talked about for the quarterbacks, that's a big year. Josh is a really smart player. Um, those really smart players take advantage of opportunities to, to, to make the most of their strengths. Josh is really athletic, too. But as a, as a year one to year two, you learn a lot in the league, like I said with Anthony. Josh is going to make the most of that from a route running perspective, from a defensive coverage identification perspective. Um, you know, I'm, I'm Josh is Josh is Josh is primed and ready to have a big camp out here and do some really good things, uh, like like the tight end position works, the receiver position. Those guys, you go through training camp, you sort of install your core plays, you run those core plays, and uh, Josh is Josh is going to get his catches, going to get his targets, and he's going to earn some different sort of spots, some different sort of roles as he goes because he is developing. He is doing such a heck of a job uh, in the offseason of, of coming along, improving. Like I said, he's always been a smart player, but when you leave that first year where everything's new, it's, you know, gosh, it's my first bye week. It's my first, you know, whatever it is, Monday night game, Thursday night game, just all those sort of different game week experiences that, that we'll end up having over the years. Um, you get to that second year and you, and, you, and you roll a little bit. So we're excited to see him do it. The way that you guys integrated Josh last year before they came to start by week one, has that tailored the way you guys are moving about with Hayden this year? Um, I think every situation is different. you got to be careful uh, sort of copying and pasting uh, last year's answer to this year's situation. So, you know, we're, we're, we're excited about AD, and we're going to let him, let him get a bunch of reps in a bunch of different situations. Um, but shoot, Alex played a bunch of good football too. We, we, we're gonna we're gonna make sure and sort of sort of let those guys all rep it out and and try to go get open versus our DBs who are gonna make it tough on them and and sort of see what's best for the Colts, man. Let's go get a bunch of reps. We'll figure a bunch out in training camp. So it's not uh, you know like I said, I, I'm always careful to not just do what we did the year before in a different spot or a different situation. Uh, each year is a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 a little bit you know you can just sort of put that at the end, put this at the end of my previous answer with Anthony like going from year one to year two, like you know when you're a rookie in this league, especially a rookie quarterback, there's a lot coming at you with just everything that goes on with a quarterback managing the huddle, managing the line of scrimmage, managing the cadence, managing the guys, uh, motion timing, all that stuff. Going into year two. 
you know, a lot of that stuff gets a lot easier because you've spent a whole year doing it, thinking about it, learning it, taking notes on it, watching other people do it. Um, so to able to be able to hit the hit the ground in a year two manner, you know, kind of the, the the rookie world's over for Anthony for a couple, obviously all our guys from last year. We're we're on to being NFL vets and and uh, and and with that at the quarterback position comes a lot of ability to sort of control the action at the line of scrimmage better and better and better. We're going through all these walkthroughs behind closed doors. We run all these plays and uh, sort of to watch Anthony orchestrate one of those long walkthroughs. It, it's 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 been great. Like it's been. It's been phenomenal this year watching him operate because we run a ton of plays and there's all these weird formations and motions and all the stuff we may not even run out here. We'll try it out and walk through, you know, and he is just running the show, sort of communicating with his guys, bringing motions, breaking the huddle on time, you know, all that, all that stuff that we do at the quarterback position has been really, really cool. So awesome. Thanks, guys. Good seeing y'all. Okay, good to see everybody here as we start training camp in our second day. Um, you know, it's been a lot thrown at our guys. I thought that when we looked at OTAs and mini camp in the past, it felt like we ended, we were playing pretty fast. Our hopes was to start training camp the same way. I thought the first day red zone, it was, we had an okay day, but I thought we picked it up better today. So that's what our hope is, is that we kind of pick up from where we left off, along with all the competition that's taking place. Does it look like you, you, you guys picked it up and sort of dominated today, and maybe the offensive line didn't? You'd much t- rather have the offensive defensive line sort of lead the way? Well, I mean, that, that's where it starts, right, is with your defensive line, especially with who we have up front. We like our veteran presence, the leadership there, you know, so we're counting on them to kind of set the tone for the whole defense because, you know, we have a saying it starts up front, and really with us that's true. Guys, you had the 51 sacks last year in the record. What – where can you improve uh, in terms of your pass rush? Right. Well, I think, you know, it's, it, it's, you look at that different ways, right? Like first and second down, and you get some play action passes. And I think, you know, when you have a, some success like that with the sacks, all of a sudden now you see more play action maxes. And, you know, where they keep people in and it's more two-man routes or three-man routes. We saw a little bit of that last year. We could see that. But it's important that we develop a mindset with our D-line converting run to pass because it feels like a run and then it's a pass. So that mentality. And then always the emphasis for us is fourth quarter rush. You know, in those situational rushes, third down, things like that. But so we'll keep emphasizing that each year is a new year. You know, so we just got to keep building as a unit to where they learn, they get enough reps with each other that they can, you know, kind of have a good feel for each other. When the pads do come on, what do you want to see from playoff two? Well, I mean, it's it's a great one because right now we're seeing a skill set. You know that we saw in college. You know his speed off the ball, his moves. But you know once the once the pads come on, now can he? You know when you don't know it's pass and it's run pass, can you convert run to pass? Can you can you have all those moves? See that skill set transfer over into all situations. So he seems like he's you know heading in the right direction though. What impressed you the most about him so far on the skill set without Well, you know right now the first two days there's been a lot of install. And a lot of times with younger guys, when you see that, they have a tendency to play a little bit slower. They're trying to figure things out. They may not play with the effort that you want. They're not going for the ball like you want. But it doesn't seem to be slowing him down. I think that's probably the most impressive. We have a lot going in, but it hasn't affected his speed on the field. What have you seen from Dallas and his recovery from the Achilles, but also sending his stuff forward? I mean, I guess the thing right. I think with Dallas and OTAs and minicamp, we saw a guy – you know, pretty impressive how he's come back from the injury. But, you know, we still see, like, coming out of breaks, maybe it's not quite there. But now in training camp, the first couple of days, you're starting to see he, he worked his tail off over the summer because you're seeing him, you know, the foot speed coming out of the breaks, that part from OTAs and minicamp thus far has showed up. When it goes to free safety, there's obviously a lot more that goes into it than, like, talent and athleticism. What are the biggest factors you guys are looking for to put someone next to well, you're right. I mean, we could talk about, boy, you got to be a good eraser, tackler, and all that. But it really comes down to trust. You know, do the guys in front of you, do they look back and do they trust that you have the skill set to get it done and can you get it done? 
and that breeds confidence. They love all the guys back there competing, but really you're looking for the respect of the whole unit, and that's just by making plays. So that's probably what we're looking for right now. This is more of a general NFL question, but in your time in the league, how has like the type of athlete playing tight end changed how you guys on defense have to deal with them? Because it, it seems like that has evolved. Right. I think now. that probably in the past, if there was – 11 personnel, it was 11 personnel. Mm -hmm. Now you have 11 big, 11 speed, 11 this. You know, you start, you know, by who's coming in the game, maybe put another letter onto that 11 so that you have an idea, all right, in this personnel grouping, maybe he's acting more like a wide receiver. So I think it's just building more awareness that there's another skill set on the field. You know, some of these tight ends are acting more and more like wide receivers. So it's important for our guys to understand that. And so, you know, the recognition of personnel in the game is important. And it does seem like there's more, like a, more of a prevalence there, too, where, like, every week there's, a, there's an elite guy. There is. Is. There is. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's been great as far as that's concerned. I mean, the talent level of the tight end position in the league. And now, I mean, now you get a guy who can block and receive. And you know who those guys are. I mean, they're, they're elite. And that's just playing 11, and we know going in the game. You know, you don't have to, you know, give them any hints on that. But, but I do think it has changed since, you know, 10 years ago or something. I think now you're more aware, and you probably dictate it based on personnel. When it comes to that pre when it comes to that pre-safety spot, so you're using Ronnie Harrison there a little bit. Uh, what went into the thought process since he's been linebacker? Well, for us, when Ronnie gets in there, it seems like something good happens. You know, whether he's playing linebacker, he's playing strong safety. And so, it, you know, we thought, you know what, we've got this competition going on back there. I mean, something good does happen. Let's take a look at it. Does he have the skill set needed to play that and give him an opportunity to compete with the rest of them? What have you seen from Jalen Carlisle so far? You know what, um, here's a, uh, generally speaking, knowing our linebacker coach, Richard Smith, right, he is a really good fundamental teacher and Toughness, hand placement, you know, strike and shed, all those things. He, both him and Cato do a great job coaching that up. So in our scheme, what we can't coach up is speed, you know, or change of direction, things like that. So you've seen us evolve to where a little bit like we're willing to go, hey, let's take a safety. And maybe he hasn't had a lot of opportunity to use his hands and strike and shed. But we feel like, all right, we can coach that part up. I think that's J.C. He's a safety. He's playing linebacker, but he's got really good length, and he has that mindset. He just has to develop that skill set. When he's in there, is he playing with Sam or Will? Uh, right now, for us, he is playing Will. But I would look for him to maybe get some reps on the outside, too, you know, at that Sam spot. Thanks, okay, thank you.